is how dominant, dominant this team has been out of the shoot in 2011. Archie Whitlock gets his first start of the season at a nagging hamstring pull. Of course, last year a foot injury as well, and Whitlock makes his 2011 debut with the Eskimos today. Uh, the Eskimos are so deep in that backfield as well as Whitlock. We'll also watch for Canadians Calvin McCarty and Jerome Messam. The receiving core, as mentioned, three great playmakers in Stamps, Bowman and Barnes. The offensive line, Washburn and Ramsey at the tackle. It's the old line they wanted from the start. Whitlock again. Look out now as our key Whitlock. Looks like he hasn't missed a beat, and the rest has done him well. A couple of big gains for the Edmonton Eskimos. Yeah, Arky Whitlock has returned in mid-season form here, and credit the Eskimos' offensive line. Good push to the right side, nice double-team. Big Patrick Kabongo, the left guard with the key block on Malik Jackson. New offensive coordinator as well for the Edmonton Eskimos, Marcus Crandall, who used to quarterback here in Calgary. In fact, led the Stampeders to a great cup. Team's been doing a lot of running too. Ricky Ray now going deep. Fred Stamps is open. He's got it. He will not be caught. It's a touchdown. But there is a penalty flag back at the 45 yard line. This is likely going to be a late hit against Calgary. The touchdown will stand. Guess the Edmonton Eskimos didn't like being behind for the first time this year. No kidding. Ricky Ray and Fred Finger Stamps foul. connect Ruffing again. The passer, Calgary number 23. The touchdown is scored. The penalty will be applied on the kickoff. 55-yard connection. Ray to Stamps. It's Fred Stamps' third touchdown of the new season. Well, Fred Stamps always a deep threat. The burner gets in behind the halfback, Brandon Smith. Ricky Ray once again stands in the pocket. Takes a little shove from Junior Turner. The Eskimos got manhandled by the Stampeders last year in the three games. Games weren't even close. Fred Stamps did not play in any of those games. He was hurt last year, and there's a penalty flag on the point after. So Stamps gets his first chance to take on the Stamps in a couple of seasons. Procedure, Edmonton, number 69. Five-yard penalty, repeat the conference. Red Stamps missed four games last year with a shoulder problem. West Division All-Star last year, still with four games. Missed. Racked up over 1,200 yards in receiving yardage. He is the go-to guy. The ball connects. The Eskimos lead 7-3 in Calgary. And the week leading the CFL in receiving. And Fred Stamps puts his stamp on this game early on. They well, sure did. The Edmonton Eskimos get man coverage. Fred Stamps is coming in motion. He's just going to run a thin post route working against the halfback. Brandon Smith gets him turned with a little stem to the outside. That half step by Smith is just enough for Stamps to get in behind him. And Ricky Ray, as usual, on the money. Ricky Ray who has found a way to manage the pocket so proficiently this season. Yesterday had a chance to sit down with them, and you know, we get a chance to sit down with these guys before day game. Game day, and said, you know, kind of one of the first times you've had a chance, you know, you're not in a losing streak, or we're not talking about, you know, after the fact, the you have to turn things around. Edmonton, number 63, so How do you feel roughness. right now? He goes, These two awesome. bosses will balance now. We'll kick from the 35. And he said a lot of it has to do with Cavis Reed and what he has brought to the Edmonton Eskimos from day one when he was hired. Yeah, and Cavis Reed spent his CFL career as a player, as a member of the Edmonton Eskimos. He understands and appreciates the history of this franchise and is trying to instill that in the players. It's a big part of the speeches he makes every week. Davis Reed is getting these guys to buy into Edmonton Eskimos football. Mike Riley, back in 1987, started 4-0. Ken Miller, 6-0. Another Eric Tillman hire. Larry Murphy now looking for a seam, a high hurdle. Brought 
down. Nice return, though, over the 46-yard line. And the men in red bring their offense back on the field. Well, after a short-lived lead, Henry Burris is going to go back to work. We've seen Joffrey Reynolds with a couple of nice runs in the early going, and this is something that Stampeders have to stay with. They have to commit to the ground game and not overlook one of their most explosive weapons, number 21. Burris's numbers last week in the win against Winnipeg. Just over 50% passing. Again, looking to the air. Now has to scramble, dodges one, another, finally lets it go. And once again, it's Cornish as Henry Burris and John Cornish make something out of absolutely nothing. A lot of escapability there from Henry Burris. Well, as good a job as Burris does using his legs to stay alive and buy time. The offensive line also does well to stay alive. They don't give up on their blocks. Those guys keep working knowing that Burris is still on his feet back there. Everywhere you see a yellow helmet, you see a red one chasing after. Diggy! Cornish again pulls his way over the midfield strike on second down. It's now a first down into Edmonton territory. A lot of talk also about the Stampeders and their start. Two and one, which is certainly something they've been down before. This row, John Huffnagel talked about it. This was this time last year when a lot of people were concerned about a two and one start. And into week four, they rolled off a seven-game win streak. Look out now. Once again, it's Cornish. Another big game, and the Stampeders establishing their running game early in this one. Uh, I love the use of motion on this play by the Calgary Stampeders. John Cornish is ultimately going to take the handoff coming to the right, but leading up to that, Nick Lewis is going in motion the other way. What that's going to do is hold the defensive end, Julius Williams. He thinks the play's coming that way. He can't crash down on Cornish, even though initially he's unblocked off the line. The second time they've cracked a 20-yarder. First Reynolds, now Cornish. Rondy Bryant lays out. The official right there is saying it's incomplete. Bobby Bryant goes to the ground trying to get this one, but is unable to come up with the catch. Henry Burris is trying to throw low and inside where only his receiver can catch that football. That one's just a little too low. Under three minutes to go before the end of this first quarter. It's second down time again for Stan Peters. Deep drop this time for Burris. Looks over the top for Joffrey Reynolds. Spied perfectly. And a loose ball, and the Edmonton Eskimos have it. It's J.C. Sherritt. It's Edmonton football. What a start for this guy out of Eastern Washington, J.C. Sherritt. Well, we'll see if Joffrey Reynolds actually had possession of this football long enough to constitute a completion before being stripped. The Eskimos are going to try and snap the ball quickly. And is there a challenge flag? Yes, there is. John Huffnagel has thrown the video challenge flag. Hey, hey, hey! Send it back to the CFL Command Center for them to review this. There's J.C. Sherritt, the 23-year-old. Out of Eastern Washington, came into the game with 17 tackles. And it bears down on Joffrey Reynolds right there. This guy does not look like, as we saw before the game, your typical linebacker. He looks more like a, a tailback. Now, well, Joffrey, or J.C. Sherritt, listed at 5'10". I'm, I'm not sure if he's yeah. even quite that tall. Calgary is challenging the play. Ruled as a catch, fumble, recovery by Edmonton. They're claiming incomplete pass. We'll review. We chatted with Rich Stubler, defensive coordinator, before the game. He loves J.C. Sherritt and the way he brings it. Says he works hard and has a good motor. He came on with a bang. We'll see those 11 tackles in his CFL debut against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. 
but as well as that that great motor, the pace at which he plays, which fits in with Kavis Reed style football, which Stubler mentioned also that this guy has a terrific football IQ. Let's get back to another look at the play at hand. The ball is punched out pretty quickly here as Reynolds looks to turn. My initial instinct is Joffrey Reynolds had a chance to secure the ball and take a step before this ball is punched out. I think the, the ruling on the field is going to stand and be a real close call, though. There it is. The ball's out. And here is the verdict from the command center. Hey, hey, Mark. Yeah, every regular field board. After review, the ball was not caught. It is an incomplete pass. The ball will be placed at the 32-yard line, third down. Just like that. Well, that proves to be a great challenge for John Huffnagel as the Stampeders are within field goal range. If Rene Paredes is able to hit this one, then obviously that challenge just earned his team three points. What a feel-good story Paredes has been. thrown into the fire here in Calgary when Rob Maver went down and out with an injury. There it is, has certainly stepped up. Shown the cool of a savvy veteran. This is from the 39-yard line. Made it earlier for 47. Kick is up and it is wide right. And the Eskimos Ray Fisher will give up the single point to make it a three-point game. Here it is. You know, it jinx the guy when you start propping them up like that. This one with the wind, but just a little wide right. It looks like the, the ball gets held there just fine as Paredes is working with a new holder in Brad Sinopoli this week, the rookie quarterback. As usual holder, R.J. Franklin, out of the lineup. R.J. Franklin and also Drew Tate, who did some of the holding. Brad Sinopoli, the Heck Crichton winner, third string quarterback, Canadian quarterback for the Stampeders. 7 4 now. The two to play, first quarter. And up again to Whitlock and is dragged down nicely from behind. Juwan Simpson. Middle linebacker of the Calgary Stampeders with the tackle. We'll see the rest of this Calgary defense. Adrian Davis has been a nice find for the Stampeders after coming over in an offseason trade from Toronto. Malik Jackson, number 11, returns after a week on the injured list of his weak side linebacker spot. And the secondary watch 31 more. Back to back on the ground again with Whitlock. This will be short of a first down. It will bring out the kick team. Our starting lineups, by the way, are brought to you by Rona, proud partner of the CFL and its eight teams. So a quick two and out for Ray and the Eskimos after that call was overturned on the field. Stampeders get one point, and now the Eskimos will punt it back. Beatrice Morley and also Larry Taylor are back, two returners. Damon Duvall. To Morley, brought down at the 25-yard line. The Calgary offense led back onto the field by their running back, Joffrey Reynolds. Model of consistency. Six straight seasons, not just over a thousand yards, over 1,200 in every full season he's played in the CFL. Off to a slow start here. His pace nearly going here for 2011, just 828 yards. They've got to start feeding him the rock. Very, very quiet to start the 2011 season. Like that, he takes the handoff, but is brought down just as he was able to get over the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of a yard and a half. 
Joffrey Reynolds also arrived in Calgary during that 2005 season along with Nick Lewis. Reynolds was a mid-season addition. Quickly became an impact player. Reynolds on to the second slowest start of his career after three games. Final play, first quarter. Burris, look out, brought down. Sacked in the backfield. David Pittman had an easy read on Henry Burris. First quarter, Cam Peters owned the ball in the first quarter, but not the lead. Well, we're going to keep an eye on that time of possession because it's something that the Eskimos have done very well in the early going, keeping a young defense off the field. But big picture for the Edmonton Eskimos, you want to talk about their response to adversity. This is a team that came into this game having never trailed out of the gate in a football game. Here they had to play from behind, and granted it was only three points, but what's impressive is how quickly this team responded when the Calgary Stampeders went up on them. They have uh, been team bounce back this season. After their 7-11 last year, missing the playoffs. Cleaning house. Only three starters back defensively. Now Burke Dales against the win. Bad kick there, bounces out of bounds. An instant field position now for the Eskimos to begin this second quarter, and they have the wind at their backs. Well, tough situation for Burke Dales. The first play of the second quarter to have to kick into that win. One of those where, ideally, after that 26-yard kick, you would have liked to have had things move a little bit more quickly and be able to get that last kick in with the win. Dales has been averaging 47 yards in the early season. Eskimos. The Stampeders quickly got some personnel off the field, but the Eskimos also jumped. It looked like a Darius Bowman was about two yards offside. Got a head start, likely against the Eskimos here. Offside, Edmonton, number four. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Talk about bounce backs, Darius Bowman as well, the former bomber and Saskatchewan Rough Rider. Bowman had some issues hanging on to the football. Last season has been working a lot on it. He's come out storming with the big weapons for Ricky Ray in 2011. Ray, here's the rush now. Going deep again and unable to catch up with it is Marcus Henry, one of the newcomers to the Eskimo offense. I like the recognition here from the Edmonton Eskimos offensively. And this is a combination of both Ricky Ray and his receiver, Marcus Henry, seeing that the free safety, Demetrius Morley, is out of the middle. He's down at the line of scrimmage blitzing. That means that the middle of the field is going to be wide open, and that's the hole that Marcus Henry's heading for, and that's where Ricky Ray's trying to connect with his big receiver. Second down now and 15. Four receivers to his right. Good play here. Running up the middle is Jerome Messam, his first touch. But it will bring the kick team out. Almost caught the Stampeders as Messam Comes over from the BC Lions after training camp and finds new life and a new home here with the Eskimos. On a good call at the time as Calgary, when the ball is snapped, have just two men at the line of scrimmage and a third walking up. They're going to have an opportunity to have a big bubble on that left side. Messam hits it on the draw play. Fortunately for the Stampeders, their linebackers reacted well. Damon Duvall from the 48 has kicked a 48-yarder this season and now has another. And the Eskimos extend their lead against their provincial rivals, 10-4.